Hi and welcome. I am Christina Bofulgo from the Center for Teaching Advancement and Assessment Research and I'm going to be talking today about utilizing a learning management system analytics to support student success. Um, so you might want to take a moment right now just to think about what you already currently use within your learning management system. Um, so do you uh, monitor the student learning throughout the system most likely? How do you do that? Um, everybody typically has something that they look for when they go into Canvas or Sakai or Blackboard um, to see what it is that the students are actually learning um, and how you can tell if they're mastering that content. Uh, so the objectives for this session are, um, there are a couple different ones, so we want to explore those analytics that are available within Canvas and other learning management systems. So I am going to use Canvas as the example here today but then you are able to um, think about some of those uh, analytics that are also available within other learning management systems and there are typically um, ones that are, are very similar within those uh, Sakai and Blackboard that you can use. Um, understand how that data could be interpreted which can be one of the most difficult parts of this. Um, and then also reflect and plan how and when to use that data to improve uh, course delivery and instruction. So what is learning analytics? So I want to start with this uh, first. Um, the, def the definitions are extremely varied within the literature. Uh, the most popular is actually the solar definition, which you see here, which is the measurement, collection, and analysis and reporting of data about learners and their contexts. Um, so one of the things though that actually is that that common element between the varied definitions is that purpose of learning analytics, right? The purpose is to understand and optimize learning and the environments in which it occurs. Um, so all of those definitions that you see within the literature, that purpose is always the same, which is important to kind of remember as you move forward using learning analytics. Um, it can also be a metacognitive tool for instructors to, to think about their teaching and learning of their students and make changes as needed. Um, it can assist you in assessing learning um, and detecting who, um, what students are struggling early within the semester when um, you can still reach out to them. So with anything, you want to understand those limitations, right? So what are the limitations um, with using learning analytics. Uh, there are a lot of confounding variables um, within education uh, research. And so this is only going to provide you a very small piece of the puzzle, right? So the, the information that you're gleaning from the learning management systems is only going to show you a small piece of what's happening. So you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Um, it also, so learning analytics can provide a lot of information that faculty can use, uh, but at this point it is very much on the faculty to um, interpret that data and then also to take actions. So it's not an automatic uh, piece yet where, you know, the, the system sees this and it pushes the student um, this message. Uh, so that data that you're getting is for faculty faculty to actually use um, and interpret. So uh, a lot of the analytics and learning management systems are very similar um, and they kind of fall under uh, a student engagement and performance data. So your um, student engagement would be typically a student page views, um, student participation information. So participation information is submitting assignments, engaging in a discussion, uh, completing a quiz, anything where the students are actually doing something within the learning management system. And then your performance data is going to be the grade information, okay, which a lot of people already use already. So new analytics within Canvas is uh, currently replacing, well, currently has replaced uh, the previous analytics tool within Canvas. So that was done on March 21st. Uh, one of the things to kind of keep in mind with new analytics is the data is refreshed every 24 hours. So the dashboard that you will see will be current um, 
from the date that it shows you. And we'll look at that in a second. Um, but it is refreshing every 24 hours. So it won't capture anything from that last time the data was refreshed. You can get to uh, new analytics from that left-hand course navigation. So under that left-hand course navigation, you should see new analytics there. Um, now, from what I understand, it should be getting pushed out to all uh, Canvas courses at this point. Um, I know in the fall, though, it, it, a lot of people have said that they still were not able to see it. Um, you can turn it on. So the way you're going to turn it on, if you don't see that analytics, that new analytics link on the left hand side, is you're going to go to settings. Um, once you click settings, you're going to click uh, the tab for feature options. And then under feature options, you'll see new course and user analytics. And this is what you wanna, you wanna toggle it on um, so that it shows green on the side there and that will turn on the new analytics. Once you turn it on, again, because that data only refreshes every 24 hours, you're not gonna see anything right away. But if you go in the next day, then you'll be able to use that information. So when you first click on the new analytics tab, one of the things that you will, uh, it'll default to is the weekly online activity. Uh, so you'll see a screen like this. It's giving you a lot of different information, but a few things that I wanna point out. The first one is this, uh, this as of February 25th. So obviously I uh, screenshotted these a while ago but as of February 25th, 3.28 p.m., so this is the last time the data was refreshed. So I was actually doing this on the 25th in the afternoon, so it was actually very current. But if you were in the morning of the 26th, then you would have to make sure that you understand that this is only current as of that afternoon before. A lot of students will do work um, at night, <laughs> over the night hours, um, so you want to be aware of that of when the actual data is current from. Uh, so you can, uh, by default, it'll show you all sections of the course in every student, but you can actually limit this um, by just starting to type in this box here. Um, so you can type in a particular section or even a particular student. So you are able to really limit what you're seeing um, and go more and more granular. So for each week, it's gonna give you this overview. So um, from February 9th to the 15th, this is showing uh, the number of page views and participation. So this is actually the, the average page views and the average participation per student for that week. Uh, so each student had approximately 6.347 participations that week and 155 page views. Uh, so this is a heavily used uh, class. Um, if you click the three dots here, you'll get another screen that'll show you a data table or display shapes. Uh, so <laughs> it annoys me that it says display shapes, but basically what it does is it's going to show you a graphical representation. So if you click that, it's going to give you this graphical representation showing you um, the average participation and average page views over weekly um, over time, though. So this is actually showing you for, for every week since the beginning of the course what the average page views are. So if you think for a second, you know, what can you see from this graph? What could this actually tell you? So you can pause the video for a moment if you want to kind of think about that. So one thing that I would kind of uh, think about is if I saw a spike in this graph, so if students were um, engaging, you know, had a lot more page views, had a lot more participation, was that valid? Was it right before an exam where I would expect them to be engaging within the, within the course shell a lot more? Or um, have perhaps I, I put too much into that week for the students to do and it's taking them a lot more time um, and energy than I really anticipated. So do I need to, do I have some course design issues that I need to take care of in coming semesters?
You'll also be able to see underneath that weekly online activity a full list of the students. So I did black all of them out here, of course. Um, but what you will see um, underneath the black rectangles are, would be the student names and then also their email addresses there. Um, and for each, uh, for each student, you're going to see their participation. So these are the number of discussions that they submitted or assignments that they, they submitted, quizzes that they did, something that they actually did within the course. And then uh, also their participation, uh, also their page views. So you can order these. So if you click on the column headers, this will order them least to greatest or greatest to least. So you can actually look for those students who have zero participations or zero page views. Um, and so you know what students to reach out to that perhaps they're not actually engaging with in the course at the level that they need to to become successful. Going back to that previous slide though, right, we had the students and we had the resources. You can actually click on the resources tab and it will bring you to this screen where you can see weekly online activity, but now instead of a listing of the students, it shows you all of the resources. Um, so this will show you all of the resources in the course um, and what the students are using and what they're not using, right? Uh, so after you click resources, you again can see the number of students in the course who um, looked at that resource, uh, the number of page views for that resource. So for instance, attendance quiz five, 20 students looked at it, uh, but 22 of them, um, you know, two, a couple of students must have looked at it more than once because there are 22 page views. Um, and then you can also see if there are any participations yet. So you can order these just as before. So you can click on any of the headers and order them. So you can see ones that have no page views or um, more than one. So one of the ones that I thought was really interesting uh, was this one, it's office hours. So this was actually an announcement that went out to students about office hours. Um, and it's showing you that only 30 students uh, looked at this announcement, which is, you know, this is a course of over 100 students um, and office hours are really important, right? They're a great way to support your students um, and their learning. And it can become worrisome if you see that only uh, 30 of those students actually looked at that information. Now, the one thing to kind of keep in mind is it will pull for the new analytics. It will pull all of the information from um, all of the Canvas platforms. So if the student is using um, a browser online, if they're using the Canvas app. So it will look at all of that participation and page views information. Uh, the one thing it can't look at though is um, emails. So remember announcements are one of those things that uh, it will be emailed out a lot of the time depending on the student notifications. Uh, so when it's emailed out to the students, there's no way to track if the student looked at it. So this 30 number, while it's worrisome, because again, you wanna make sure all the students know about the office hours, they might have seen it in the email and not looked at the actual announcement. So something to keep in mind. Um, you know, but an, another piece about this is, you know, thinking about what resources, again, from a course design perspective, what resources the students are using and what they're not. Um, and what they should be, right? If you designed a resource that you think is gonna be really helpful for your students and none of them used it, um, you kind of wanna understand why and perhaps be able to, to direct students to that resource again. Um, so the weekly online activity, you it, it is giving you that by uh, uh, grouped by week, but you can actually look at it per week um, so if you click on, if you pick one of the weeks and you can see that the page view number or participation number is linked. Um, and if you click on that, it will bring up this screen out from the right hand side. And it will give you just a overview of that particular week. So February 16th to the 23rd, you can see the total uh, page views um, 
or the total participations. Um, and these are the number of students. So 96 students participated in this week, uh, but five of them didn't. So five of them didn't submit anything, didn't do any discussions, nothing. Now what's really nice about this screen and is one of the really important things um, about the learning analytics within learning management systems is again, you know, this was a limitation. Um, it's kind of on the instructor at this point. All of this information is there for the instructor, but the actions have to be taken by the instructor. But in this, uh, in this layout, it makes it very easy for the instructor to do that. So if you click on the number, if you click on the five, for instance, it's gonna bring up this screen where you can message students who. So you can actually message students who didn't participate in that week, who didn't view anything that week. Um, you can see the students are, are BCC'd, um, so they won't know that you're actually messaging a group of them, um, but kind of keep that in mind. You don't want to say, hello, Anne, um, when she is not the only one being emailed. Um, you know, you can also, which I think is a really great thing to do, you can also uh, message students who did view, who did participate. Um, you know, sometimes when you're in an online environment, you know, students don't get that that uh, little nod of encouragement from an instructor when uh, they answer a question or when they, you know, uh, when you're handing back a paper and they did really well. Um, so it's important to let students know that they're they're doing a great job as well, not just those students who are perhaps um, not doing that well within the course. So this makes it very easy to also match those students who are doing everything they need to do and just say, hey, you know great job, like you you really uh, pulled through this week and, and submitted everything, that's great. Uh, so you can also, so the weekly online activity, you can also download that information. Um, so if you click on the little download button there, it will let you download a CSV, which then you can open in Excel. Um, when you download it, it's gonna download actually a zip folder which when you, when you uh, unzip it, it's gonna give you three files. It's gonna give you the chart, resources, and students. Uh, the chart is gonna look very much like that uh, graphical representation of the average page views and average participations over time, but it's only giving it to you in a table. Um, but you can run, um, you can have Excel just make that into a, a graphical representation if you're interested in that. Uh, the resources is going to bring up that list that I was showing you before of all the resources and the, and the, the number of students who accessed it and all of that. Um, and then students is going to be the list of the students with, which with again, their um, average page views and average participations and all of that. Um, so it's a, another way that you can kind of take that information um, and if you're more comfortable using Excel or a, a different um, system, you can download that information to look at it um, in a different way. Uh, you can also do this uh, from for just one week. So this again is the over, over several weeks information, but if you go back to that you know, if you click on a specific week and the specific week information pane, pane, you can also download these files just for that week. Um, if you do the weekly download, you're not gonna see the chart as a file um, because it's not showing you it over time, right? It's only in that one week. So when you click on that weekly online activity, again, the, the system will default to weekly online activity. But if you click the little uh, down carrot on the side there, um, you can actually select course grade. Um, so at the top, at the top, you're going to see the average uh, grade for the course, right? Average grade for all of the sections. Again, it is defaulting to all sections. Um, so a lot of this information, right? So this average grade is something that you would see in the, in the grade book as well. That is very true, um, but uh, but there is a lot more information that you can kind of glean from this uh, this dashboard here. 
Um, so hopefully I can show you how you might find this useful. Um, so the first thing to notice too is that you can select what you want to look at. Uh, so this course has assignments, it has quizzes, so you can actually tick or untick um, to only look at specific things. Um, it is only including things that are part of the grade. So for instance, this course does actually have discussions, but the discussions aren't a part of the course grade at all, so you can't see those here. If you click on any of the dots on the graph, it is interactive and it will bring up this screen. So this is actually showing you um, for the assignment, for assignment one, right? Um, the average grade, the low, the high, um, the distribution of the grades, which is always interesting to see. And again, as we've talked about before, one of the benefits is this very easy way to, to contact students, to reach out to students. So you have that message students who, um, which will bring up that box where you can message students who didn't submit it or have a specific grade. Um, so it will show you the missing and the late as well. Um, and again, those are uh, live links, so you can click on them to see those particular students. The distribution is also nice to see. Um, I know normal distributions are, are typically considered the best, um, so we won't go uh, in, into a discussion about if it is the best or not for grading, um, but it is interesting to kind of see that, that distribution of your assignments as well. Okay. Um, so just like the other screens, under the course grade, you will see a list of all the students. Um, so and it will show the, the name of the student as well as their email. And it'll show you their grade. It'll show you the percentage of assignments that they submitted on time. Um, their last participation, their last page view, right? So the last participation, last page view, those are things that you could see from uh, the um, the students, uh, the, the people tab within Canvas, and the grade um, and the on time, that's something that you could see from the grade book. But this is combining those two elements in one location for you to look at. Again, all of these are, um, all of the headings are linked, so you could order them by uh, highest grade to lowest grade if you wanted to, to kind of take a look at that. Um, and you can also actually click on a specific student. Um, so you can click on a specific student name. So I know this is <laughs> behind the black box, um, but if you click on a, a specific student's name, it, it's going to give you a more detailed breakdown of the grade and their participations and their page views and all of that. Okay. Now, what's also really great about this page that I think is one of the, the most beneficial is uh, you can add, so for instance, this is showing my all sections, right? But I added in a particular student. So again, I boxed out the name, um, but the green uh, square is showing all of that student's averages. So I can see here um, for all of these quizzes, uh, the student's average was actually higher than the course average. But for these assignments, uh, the student's average, right, the green square, um, is lower than the course average, which is the blue circle. So it really makes you kind of start to think about, okay, well, you know, why, what is going on here that the student is uh, performing lower than the course average and, and significantly lower than the course average on these assignments. Um, and over two different assignments as well, that gap is is very similar. So it's something to kind of to kind of think about. And there's a lot of different interpretations that you could have for this data if you want to take a minute and think about that. Um, so if you want to take a moment now and think about, you know, how you could see yourself utilizing this information, right? What would be helpful for small classes? What would be helpful for large classes? Um, and when would you look at this information, right? Would you look at it mostly at the beginning of course to make sure everyone is, um, 
starting well and starting strong? Um, would you look at it after the midterm to kind of see what's happening and to make adjustments as needed? Um, so there's a lot of different information that can be helpful for different contexts and different scenarios. Uh, so take a moment and think about how this information might be helpful for you. So now we're going to talk about the quiz statistics. So the quiz statistics are really great within Canvas. Uh, they allow you to determine validity and reliability of the, the test questions. Um, it's very helpful to identify those students who are struggling within the course. Um, and every learning management system is going to have these features. Again, I'm going to demo it with Canvas to kind of give you an idea of some of the information that's there and how you could interpret and use it. Um, but they are the, the same type of statistics that are within every learning management system. So to get to your quiz statistics, you want to hit that um, once you go to a particular quiz, and the quiz does have to be published, and at least it, ha it has to have at least one submission to be able to see this quiz statistics on the right-hand side. But when you go to the quiz, you should see this quiz statistics there. Um, it does only work with quizzes that have 100 questions or less and less than 1,000 attempts. Uh, so if you have more than 1,000 students, you're not going to be able to, to view the quiz statistics here. You would have to download the information. Um, or if you have more than 100 questions. So you might be wondering, why would I have more than 100 questions? Um, so there are question groups within Canvas. Uh, question groups allow you to actually put in uh, 10 questions and then um, tell the system, hey, just push one of these questions out to a student to, to complete. Uh, so this is a way to randomize the assessment for students. But if you do, you know, if you have a, a 10 question um, assessment and you put 10 options for each of those 10 questions that will go out to students. That's actually a, a hundred that are in the um, in the quiz. So it won't show this screen from there. You would have to actually download the quiz statistics in that case. Um, so once you click on that quiz statistics though, you'll come to this screen. Uh, so you can filter by section. Um, so it will again default to showing all the sections of the course. Uh, it will show you the average score, the high score, the low score, um, which is interesting. It will show you that standard deviation. Um, so the standard deviation is that, that spread of the data from the mean. Um, so lower numbers are going to mean, are going to indicate that, you're, that you are actually, your scores are closer to the mean. Um, and higher standard deviations are the scores are further from the mean. So this is really important to think about um, when you're, you're thinking about consistency. Um, and, and remember too, you want to consider your standard deviation in terms of the mean again, because it, it, it's looking at how far it is from the mean. Um, you also are included the average time. Um, and I think this is really interesting because there, there have been a few instances where I anticipate an assessment taking, you know, 20 minutes um, and it might take students 40 or 60 minutes. And it completely, you know, makes me rethink what, what, what did I, you know, what did I have them do? Um, and again, from a course design perspective, I want the students to be efficient. Um, so I have to look at, is it, is it something with the, the students not uh, um, approaching the problems efficiently, or is it something the way I designed the assessment that needs to be adjusted? Um, it also provides this distribution of results. Uh, so this is a nice way to, you know, if you're not comfortable looking at standard deviation, um, so you know the mean is at 70%, and you can look at that spread uh, around, um, around your, uh, your mean. Um, now this is just showing you, it doesn't include a scale on the Y axis, which is very frustrating for me, but it's just showing you the total number of, of students 
who had that score. So here you could see um, multiple students had a score of 70% and 100%, but only like one had a score of, it looks like 92. Um, below this, as you scroll down, it will give you a question breakdown for each of the questions on the quiz. Uh, so this will show you the number of students who completed the quiz correctly. Um, so you'll see that the number of students who actually completed this question correctly. Um, it'll show you the, the distribution of the students who submitted each answer choice. So here, um, the little tick mark means that that was the correct answer and 21 students uh, responded with that correct answer. Three students responded with the incorrect answer. Um, this is really important uh, for me um, as an instructor. Uh, so what I have found really helpful is a lot of the times I know um, when the student submits an answer, what misconception they have if it's incorrect. Uh, so the three respondents, the 21 respondents there that you see, those are actually live links. You can click on those and it will, um, again, bring up a box with those three students so that you can reach out to them personally and say, hey, I noticed you submitted this answer. Um, you might be thinking this, but this is really what's going on. Um, so that has been very powerful as well for me. Um, it's also going to show you the discrimination index, uh, which is a statistic that indicates the ability of an item to differentiate among students on the basis of how well they know the material. Um, it's similar to a point by serial, but not quite the same. Um, Canvas tries to make this easier for you. Uh, so lower discrimination scores in red are uh, 0.24 or lower, and it will show you this with a, a red number like that. And above 0.24 um, will show you in green. So the idea of the discrimination index, right, is that if you have a student who does really well on the quiz overall, but on this question gets it wrong, and if you look at the question and a lot of the students who did really well um, get this question wrong, but a lot of the students who did poorly on the quiz overall get this question right, um, that's what the discrimination index is trying to tell you. It's trying to say that there might be um, a low discrimination index in red is going to indicate questions that might be confusing or misleading so that students who actually know the material are getting it wrong um, and then other students perhaps are, are guessing the, the right answer. Um, so again, from a course design perspective, it's a question that you may want to look at in the future uh, that's confusing or misleading um, and may not actually be assessing what you wanted to assess a uh, student mastery of. Um, so we'll show you this question breakdown for, for manually graded questions. So these are the questions that are given to students like open-ended, uh, short answer, or essay questions. Uh, so you as the instructor would need to grade these individually, but it will still show you this in the quiz statistics. It just does it in a little bit different way. So it shows you um, the answers that scored in the top 27%, middle 46%, um, or bottom 27%. Uh, what's really interesting about this, I have found, um, is that as I'm going through grading each one individually in speed grader, I think that I have a good idea about how everyone has done overall, um, but but very often I'm, I'm off. <laughs> you know, either students did a lot better overall than I thought they were going through each question individually, um, or they didn't do as well. So this kind of breaks it down um, a little bit easier for you to kind of get an overall idea about how students did on that open-ended question. Um, and you can also go right to speed creator from here to, to look at it in more detail. Um, so at the top with that quiz summary, you are also able to get to an item analysis. Um, so this is gonna give you uh, several different statistics to look at the reliability and validity of all of your questions. Um, so it gives you that option of, again, downloading the 
um, the CSV that you can open into Excel. Um, and I think the, the important thing here to remember, uh, so it's going to give you a, a lot of different statistics in that download. Um, it's going to show you some very simple, simple uh, figures. So for instance, the number of students who got it right, the number of students who got it wrong. Um, it's going to give you a, a difficulty index, which is uh, like a p-value. Um, it's going to show you some different measures for validity and reliability. Um, but I think the important thing to kind of remember is that you should look at that data at the level that you're comfortable with. If you are not comfortable with looking at p-values, if you're not comfortable looking at an in-depth item analysis, uh, you can ignore a lot of the other columns. But it might be an easy way for you to kind of look at those questions where, you know, more than 50% of the students got it wrong. You know, why did they, why did they get it wrong? Um, is there something confusing or misleading about the question? Or is there a gap in instruction? Um, do you need to, again, think about the design of the course and making sure that you address uh, the, the gap in that content? Um, you can also get a student analysis. So this, again, will show you student by student um, all of the questions, the ones they got right, the ones that they got wrong. Again, this will be a CSV that you can open into Excel. Um, again, <laughs> you want to take this information uh, with a grain of salt. It's giving you a small piece of the puzzle, A, um, and B, you want to take it at the level that you're comfortable with. Um, so these are, these are elements that you may or may not feel comfortable using, but if you don't feel comfortable using it, that is completely all right. And, um, you know, Perhaps you, you uh, look at a small piece of it, or you just look at the overall dashboard for that quiz. I'm gonna make a plug now for, uh, you know, really thinking about quizzes as formative assessment within your learning management system. So this analysis that is provided within the learning management system for quizzes is so great. It's a quick and easy way for you to look at how students are doing. So providing it as a formative assessment where, you know, maybe you're giving them a, a little bit of a, you know, um, point toward their grade for the quiz, but really think it got it more as a way to direct students to how they're doing um, and how they can improve and what the gaps in their understanding are so that uh, you can support them appropriately. Um, these are a great way to do entrance or exit tickets um, or in place of the traditional clicker questions. So instead of doing the, the traditional clicker questions in class, you could actually have the students go into Canvas and do the quizzes in there, um, the, the learning management quizzes. Um, so I do have a variety of references that are available to you here, um, as well as different resources. So uh, most of these are on Canvas. Um, there are There is one at the bottom for statistics. So if you are looking to engage more in that statistical analysis, the item analysis, uh, there's several great options from Andy Fields. He's one of my favorites for statistical textbooks. So he really breaks it down for, for students. So if you're looking for uh, support for that, that would be a great option. And thank you.